What is up guys, it's Ace Curtis and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'll be teaching you guys how to make a jump game on scratch. Obstacles will be coming at the player and the player will have to try and dodge them. This is part one of my multi-episode series. Make sure to like and subscribe and comment down below. Without further ado, let's get right into the video. So the first thing you're going to want to do is create a player. As you can see, I have a player right here. It's just a simple rounded cube with an outline. You also need to create the ground, which is what the player runs on. Mine's just a rectangle with an outline. And you want to create a backdrop, as you can see right here. And once you've done all those three, we can start coding. So you would want a one green flag clicked, and we want it to go over here. We want it to drop into the game. So these coordinates are at x minus 92 and y minus 22. It may be different for you, but what this code does it just does it so that when you start up the game, this cube will spawn over here. And then we want to create a new variable called gravity. Make sure it's set to four all sprites. And this will control the gravity of the player and its movement. We want to set gravity to zero at the beginning because this is when the game resets so everything can work perfectly. Now we need a forever loop. Get an if else and put if touching ground. So whatever we put in here determines what will happen if we are touching the ground right here, the ground sprite. So if we're touching the ground, we want to set the gravity to zero, to nothing. And this will make it so that gravity won't have an effect on the player if it's touching the ground. It will stick to the ground. But inside this if loop, we want another if. Saying if key space or up or if you click. So whatever thing you like that you want to make the player jump. I'll just do if key up arrow keys pressed, but it's up to you. If key up arrow keys pressed, pressed, I want to set gravity to 12. So this controls how high you want the player to jump. It's kind of like saying it's jumping at a height of 12. Now, in this else section, we want to put change gravity by minus one. So this means that if it's not touching the ground, then it will keep on falling. And then when it does touch the ground, it stops falling. And it enables it to be able to jump. Because we don't want it to be able to jump even when it's not touching the ground. So now, if we click the green flag, nothing happens. This is because we actually have to affect the Y. So we'll just put a change Y by gravity. And this makes it better. Now I can jump with no problems. Now the next thing we are going to do is make the player be able to duck or crouch down with the down arrow. So I'm going to make a new costume and I'll just rename this to player to idle player to show that it's just in its normal form and I can 
right click and duplicate this and I'll rename the costume to Crouch. Now I'll just edit the player over here. I'll center it first. And I'll just edit it by That looks good. Now, I'll just center this small place right as well. And bring it back over here. But then I'll have to change its coordinates. So now we have the two costumes for the player. One when it's normal and when it's crouching. So we want to add some new code. If the key down arrow is pressed, key down, down, we want it to switch costume to the crouch which is called idle player 2 um i forgot make sure to put it in an if else so if the down arrow key is pressed we'll switch it to this costume the crouching costume but else if it's not being pressed it'll go back to normal so the idle player and at the beginning where everything, where everything resets, we want it to be the idle player as well. So now I can crouch and I can jump. But now we would like to add the danger. So you can create a new sprite. And this would be the spikes. So I'll just create a simple spike right here. Okay, now that I've created my spike, you want to duplicate it. So I'll just duplicate this and it'll be spike 2. And I'll copy it and paste. And then I'll just put the two spikes next to each other. Then I'll duplicate this again, and it'll be a triple spike. So I'll paste the previous spike and put the three spikes next to each other. So now I have three spikes, and I'll center all of them. Then I think I'll add a dangerous ball that comes up high so that the player can duck underneath it. I'll just do a circle, the color orange, orange yellow. And I'll edit it. Yep. There'll be spikes all over it. 
don't know if he kind of like fire. I think this is okay. And I'll just name it Fire. So we're gonna be using clones now. Clones are a way to copy a sprite without actually needing to make up multiple sprites. It's a very helpful block and scratch. So we'll do one green flag clicked. We want to, it to go to the edge over there. So that is uh, X292 Y38. And again, it might be different for you guys. And once you've done that, we want to hide it. Because we're going to create clones of it. And those clones will be shown. Then we add a forever block. Forever. Create clone of myself. So this will create copies of the danger. Because we want the danger to be coming at the player. While the player tries to dodge it. And when I start that clone. You want it to show. So as you can see, there's many clones of it right here. We also want these dangers to glide to the other side. So we'll have a change X by minus 10 but we'll need to wait a few seconds before the next danger comes out because as you can see they're all bunched up together so we'll go into control and put in a wait 1.7 seconds Okay, that was too long. 0 0.5. And we want to put the change X by 10 in the one I start as clone. And now, once we have done this, we, sh we can see that the code doesn't work. So now we want to put a forever block around the one I start as clone and we want to put a four of the block around the one I start as clone and they will start gliding but as you can see it's they're too close together so we could easily just put away 0 0.5 seconds in there but then the game might be too easy so to make it a bit harder we can pick a random number 0 0.8 to 1.2 seconds i say and as you can see the danger comes at different times but the only danger that we're getting is the fire. We want to get some spikes. So we'll do switch costume to a random costume. So pick random one to four. We have to rename all of these to the numbers so that they could count as numbers so that they can count as numbers so one two three and four and once we've done that pick random one to four now we get different dangers but they're in the air and what we want to do about that is 
bring them down. Instead of doing all of the costumes individually, we can just do it like this. We just show it. And just delete this hide. Um, we can see what coordinates these are. And this is, the Y is minus 47. The Y is all we need. The X wouldn't change, so minus 47. And now, these spikes are on the ground, and we can jump over them. But when the fire comes, it's too high that we don't even need to crouch for it. I mean, too low. We want to put it a bit above, a higher, so we'll be able to crouch when it comes. Like that. So this is good. But when they get to the end, they get stuck. They don't go away. And to fix this, all we do is what in the when I start as clone, we get an if block. If x position is greater, I mean less, if it's less than let's say minus 229 then we want it to delete the clone so if the x position is somewhere about over here so minus 229 is greater than it, we want it to delete this clone And when it goes to the end, we can see that they disappear. We might want to increase this number by a bit more so that it looks like it fully gets off the screen before it disappears. Now we have the game. Now, all we need to do is add when we hit the spike or the fire, we lose. So, I'll just hit the spike and nothing happens. So, now create a new sprite and this will be a losing, a losing screen. So I'll just create a rectangle with some words on it saying you lose. I'll do this font, I like it. And black text. Make it a bit bigger. and increase the thickness of it. Then, once you've done that, we can rename it to new screen. And we can get into the Scratch library and see if there's a flag. Yes, the green flag. Now we can copy, copy this costume or this image and I'll paste it into the losing screen and we can add more text saying click the green flag to play again.
the flag to retry. And now I can put it over there. I can delete this green flag and we can hide this losing screen. What we'll do is add another if into the player script. Make sure you're on the player. So if touching danger, touching danger. We wanted to broadcast a message. So it sends a message. So let's do lose. That's the message. It sends a message all the way to the lose screen. And we want it so that when the lose screen receives this message, it shows. So when I receive lose, show. But when the green flag is clicked, or when the game starts, we don't want it to be shown. So when the green flag is clicked, we'll have it to hide. And now if we play, and if we lose, this you lose screen pops up. And we can click the flag to retry. And that is the first part of this jump game tutorial series. I hope you like that video. In the next episode, we'll be improving the game and adding a game menu. Make sure to like, subscribe and comment down below. If you need any help, just comment. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.